Ugh. This is the only bit of green I have and it doesn't even look green, but I'm wearing green because we're about to talk about the Green Party. So the Green Party of Canada is one of the fringe parties, but it does have two seats in the House of Commons, so they have a seat at the table. The party is led by Elizabeth May, a position she's held for 13 years. She is portrayed in the media as a pretty genuine leader with nothing really refuting that. The Green Party is a left-wing party supporting policies on non-violence, social justice, and environmental sustainability and was created in 1983 when there was a realization that wealthy countries were completely unsustainable when reaping the Earth's resources for profit. Now, the Green Party is relatively small, so it's easy for them to situate themselves further left than the Liberals and the NDP on the spectrum. However, they haven't really encountered much that would cause them to compromise their values, so would they still remain true if in power? We'd have to see. In case you didn't watch my crash course in Canadian politics, I'm going to explain the concept of a minority again really quickly, um, because like I said, with the polls, it's definitely a possibility. A minority government is formed if the party with the most votes still has less than 170 seats in the House of Commons. That party's leader still becomes the Prime Minister because they had the highest number of votes, but without the majority of seats in the House of Commons, they risk being outvoted every time there is debate over legislature. If the party in power loses a vote on legislature, any any other party can call for a vote of non-confidence, which basically means that that party is not strong enough to lead and a re-election is possible. However, like I said, elections are extremely expensive, so solutions are looked for um, in order to prevent that from, get, from getting to that point. One solution is a coalition government. In this case, the winning party would choose another party to govern with them so that that selected party would um, have the majority seats in the House of Commons and then that second party would have seats in the Prime Minister's cabinet. The Green Party has never been in third place for the race for Prime Minister, but if they were to place third, then they would be the optimal choice for a coalition government. So, for those of you thinking that voting for a fringe party is a burn vote because they will never win, please think again. I have heard this justification from people not voting green even though they want to more times than I can count throughout this election. But just imagine the numbers if every person voted her for who they wanted to without the fear of it being a wasted vote. The third place party has more seats in the house than the fourth place party and more seats equals more votes. So if the outcome is a minority government and the green party is in third place, they would theoretically join the winning party in the decision making. Okay, so moving on to their actual platform, I just want to start off by stating that I do not have the time to explain the evidence for climate change. 97% of the world's scientists are certain that human activity is contributing to the deterioration of an environment optimal for human survival. If you need more education on the matter, I'll probably post some resources in the video description below. Also, even though the Green Party is typically viewed as fighting for the environment, please let me correct you now. Their platform provides possible solutions to every issue the other parties are addressing. Um, I'm just going to directly take this quote from Elizabeth's message to voters published on the Green Party's website because it pretty much encompasses their entire platform. This is not a one-issue platform. It sets out a deep commitment and action plan to genuine truth, justice, and reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. The platform speaks to our immediate anxieties about affordability in housing, prescription drugs, and education. It outlines how Canada can function better as a federation through greater cooperation, but underscoring it all is to be... Is a call to be inspired to answer the call of species without voices of children without votes um, the Green Party has six main values participatory demo democracy <laughs> wow I gotta go to bed I pulled an all-nighter um, the Green Party has six main values participatory democracy nonviolence respect for diversity ecological wisdom social justice and sustainability all six values are important, but the last three especially drive the party's platform. So um, when they talk about ecological wisdom, they are just starting with the realization that the global economy relies too heavily on fossil fuels, a non-renewable resource that will run out. We honestly can't afford to be reliant on something that will run out. It's, an, it's impractical because it's going to run out and then what are we going to do? Fossil fuels are directly and negatively changing the atmosphere into an unhabitable biome. Number two, social justice. The Green Party recognizes climate change as the primary social justice issue as it is the poor that will suffer the worst effects created primarily by the actions of the wealthy. 
a good example, the Koch brothers, like the wealthiest brothers in the world, one just died, thank goodness, sorry, I'm trying not to be biased here, but yeah, they are the guys that pretty much own the oil industry, and yeah, dumb. Look them up if you want more information. The party also has plans for other social justice issues, such as changes to healthcare systems, including pharmacare and dental care for low-income persons, free post-secondary and trade school education, federal student debt forgiveness, increased funding for municipal and community infrastructure, universal child care, and affordable housing. Then they've broken up their sustainability stance into two different ones, one environmental sustainability and two fiscal sustainability, because fiscal sustainability is very important. <laughs> you can't do much if the country is consistently running in debt. Oh, but wait, we already are. So environmental sustainability, the Green Party plans on increasing environmental and infrastructure initiative spending. Their plan is to cancel all fossil fuel projects, i.e. pipelines, and use the funds already set aside for these projects for things like an east to west electrical grid and other stuff like that. Um, when they do need more money, they're planning on reaching out to private sectors for financing, but it's not important. Number four, I shouldn't say it's not important, but I just, we're not talking about it right now. <laughs> Number four, um, fiscal sustainability. They plan on balancing the federal budget in five years while maintaining Canada's debt to gross domestic product ratio and AAA credit rating. They detail it pretty well in their proposed budget. So if you want to check out how they plan on doing it, just go to the Green Party of Canada's website. Elizabeth May has a bunch of other great ideas, including cutting taxes on cannabis products, a universal pharmacare program, ways to improve relations with the Indigenous peoples, and even ways on how to strengthen transparency in the government, which I think is huge because, like, the government has just become so corrupt. If a party you are in, if it's a party that you're interested in learning more about, their website is extremely user-friendly, and it's in the description below.